Good evening everybody, uh, it's nice to be out and about in Bramall Lane for once, the weather's now been kind to us and uh, today we're speaking from the Shoreham Street cop end of the ground, uh, in fact Mrs Garrett's seat that she'd had for many many years, uh, we always think of the cop as being a new stand uh, but the roof and everything as you see and the seats were of course opened in uh, 1990, went back into the old first division and uh, we always think of it as we say as a new stand but in actual fact it's the oldest one in use in the ground. Uh, and the base, everything you see underneath us, has been here since 1902. So uh, <clears throat> if ever the stand in the ground could tell a story, uh, then it's this one. Uh, this week, before we sort of tell any tales of fables and folklore, or folklore and fables, uh, we mark the passing of uh, one of our most highly regarded goalkeepers post-war, without a doubt, at the uh, ripe old age of 91, Ted Bergen. When you look back in the uh, sort of Parthenon of things, big word there for me, um, it's sobering when you think that Ted Bergen took the gloves off uh, Jack Smith and Jack Smith signed for United in 1928, played in the 1936 Cup Final. Uh, Ted was a Sheffield lad. Uh, we've got his birthplace as Stannington, uh, but I've seen it at Bradfield as well. But it's one of these great stories and I'd love to know if it was true. I never asked him a couple of occasions I met him, but allegedly he actually turned up at Bramall Lane uh, seeing that they'd uh, got a goalkeeper crisis and offered his services, which I hope's true. Uh, but Ted was some keeper, five foot seven, which uh, not the tallest of goalkeepers, makes Alan Hodgkinson look huge, uh, but a towering figure, uh, one of the great pioneers in his own personal training. Oji told me loads of times just what an absolute physical fitness fanatic Ted was, uh, but also a great thinker of the game and how it should be played. Uh, got a league championship medal with us in 1952-53. Nickname was The Cat, which I think is brilliant. And I've seen loads of stories about him. So I met him twice, I think, Ted. Lovely bloke. Uh, but somebody told me about one of his famous little uh, escapades was that uh, when the referee wasn't looking, he'd scoop down an handful of mud, and then go in from a free kick or whatever, shove it in the face of the striker who was attacking him, which is brilliant. I do know I used to uh, like chewing gum, Ted. The back of the net would always be full of Wrigley's or PK, whatever the, uh, uh, it was the beach nut girl, wasn't it? Used to walk around the edge of the pitch selling chewing gum uh, before and during half time at the game. Uh, but uh, passed away at the ripe old age of 91. Um, and I know for a fact he was still involved in coaching. Mostly kids, I think, but up to not that many years ago. So, I mean, that's one hell of a career to have had. Uh, when he left Sheffield United, went briefly to Doncaster. Uh, it was the replacement for the great Harry Gregg who'd gone to Manchester United, uh, but he dislocated the shoulder quite early on. Don't think he ever played a game again, but then went to Leeds United, played with Don Revy and uh, Harold Brook would have been at Leeds then, he was the captain of the 52-53 League Championship side. And then he went to Rochdale, great little club Rochdale, and Ted played in the 1962 League Cup Final uh, for Rochdale. I think uh, another one of the great Melbourne players, Stan Melbourne was in that team as well, brother of the great Jackie Melbourne. Uh, they played Norwich, and Norwich beat them well over two legs. But in the Norwich line, it was a player called Bill Punton, who many Blades will remember, uh, scored a very famous goal in a Sheffield derby when he came to Norwich, or came from Norwich, and a player always looked about 50. <laughs> but he's still around and working for Norwich City, so uh, well done, Bill. But just to remember there, one of our great post-war goalkeepers. Uh, in fact, he handed the, the gloves, as it were, over to Alan Hodgkinson. It's interesting to think between the early 1930s and the late 1960s, really, there was other great keepers and some cracking keepers. We've always had a great tradition of that. Uh, but three of the main keepers, so the span all that era. Incredible when you think about it. Also this morning, we're very saddened to uh, hear that Kevin Randall had passed away. Uh, if you're a Chesterfield fan, Kev Randall is a legend. Uh, what a great team that they had there with Ernie Moss and players like that. Uh, we knew a different Kevin Randall. And he came to work under Neil Warnock, first as the reserves coach, and did very well. Uh, we won the old Central League with him as manager. And then he went to uh, be head scout for Neil. And he worked with Neil, I think, at Palace and Leeds as well. But he was here for quite a long time, was Kevin. And uh, we were all talking in the tea room this morning what a proper football man he was, um, but also what a nice man. A uh, great sense of humour. And one of those great people to have around the ground of the club at that time. So. Uh, in both cases, in Ted Bergen's uh, case and also Kevin Randall's, the sincere condolences of everybody at Sheffield United Football Club go out to both their families and we thank them both for the, the service that they gave us. 
Tomorrow, uh, our opponents, of course, are Bristol City, and it's the first in one of, uh, well, four cup finals. Every game is a big game at Bramall Lane, the last four. And Bristol, down the years, has been loads of games between the Blades and Bristol City. But I wanted to touch on a couple of people that link the clubs from way back. Now, their first real manager, or went down there as a player manager, I think, was a footballer that, in Sheffield United terms, is one of the great, great names of our early history. Born in Hexthorpe, Doncaster, and his name was Harry Thicket. Now, Thicket was some character. Uh, we signed him quite early on. He played for Rotherham, or Rotherham Town, at some point. Played quite early on for Sheffield United, then went back to his original club, uh, and then signed for the Blazers in the early 1890s. Now, Thicket became another one of those great players that the early successor Sheffield United's built on. Uh, defender, fullback. Uh, he was some colossal player. Again, he's another one of that elite club that won the league championship, uh, two FA Cups, an FA Cup runners-up, a charity shield. He played for England. He was some player. And I always love the story that when uh, we lifted the FA Cup in 1899, he went back home to Hexthorpe and took the FA Cup with him on the train, <laughs> took it to a pub in Hexthorpe, put it on the bar and bought everybody drinks, which is the way to do it when you think about it. Uh, Harry had a great, great career with us. Fantastic story of one of the semis that had broken three ribs. And he was so desperate to play in the game that he was wrapped in 20 yards of wet bandage to protect his ribs. And he went out and played, uh, along with half a bottle of scotch. Um, I don't think that'd get through our coaching techniques these days. But such was the determination of Harry to play for the Blades in a major cup final. Uh, also, when the team was training in 1901 for the game against Tottenham Hotspur, the cup final against Spurs, we used to use a hotel in Skegness called the Sea View, which is still there in Sheffield United. Uh, the Victorians' version of warm weather training, like the lads were in Spain last week, uh, we go up to Skegness on the train and spend a week there. Uh, two famous stories came out of that training session. The first one that was while Harry was training up there, or uh, on the camp up there, News came by word of telegram that his wife had died in Doncaster, uh, leaving two young children. So Thicket asked for dispensation to go back and make arrangements for the funeral, which he did. And I think that was on the Tuesday or the Wednesday. <clears throat> and famously, they planned to play the final against Spurs without him. I think it's against Spurs, that one. Um, and he turned up at the team hotel in London and declared himself fit to play, which is incredible when you think about it. Uh, the Sea View also is the famous incident of our great goalkeeper, William Henry Folks, Fatty Folks, when they were going out for a post-breakfast or pre-breakfast walk, and Folks said it was too cold and he felt tired, he was going to stay in the hotel. And I don't think anybody was going to argue with Bill Folks. Um, while the team were out, their cut breakfast, their full English breakfast, were delivered under chrome platters and placed on the table, ready, piping hot for them when they arrived back. And of course, when the team got back there, all the breakfast had gone and our famous goalkeeper was asleep in front of the fire with his shoes off, uh, which is brilliant. Thicket went to Bristol City, went down there and became some manager. They won the second division championship with him. Um, and also they went to what is so far their only FA Cup final uh, against Manchester United, which sadly the Robins lost. Uh, but Thicket made a big impression down there. When he came to the end of his managerial career at Bristol, he had a pub in Trowbridge in Wiltshire. Uh, when he died in the early 1920s, he was still only a relatively young man in his 40s, uh, but he ballooned to 46 stones in weight, so he made Bill Folks look like an absolute amateur. Now, when he went down there, he took two Sheffield United players with him. Uh, one was a player called Annan, and the other was a very, very famous player by the name of Walter Cocky Bennett. Now, Bennett was one of the real stars of that great Victorian side, won all the major honours with the Blades, as did Thicket. Um, and he also played for England, again, as did Thicket. But uh, he went down to Bristol, won a second division championship medal with him. But he and the family couldn't settle down there. So in 1907, when he still should have been at the peak of his playing career, bear in mind this is a top flight football player, he decided to leave Bristol City and return to Doncaster. He came from quite near to Thicket. Um, he came from uh, Denneby, Maine. Thicket from Hexthorpe. But uh, Bennett brought his entire family back up here, gave up playing professional football, played for Denneby United, and took a job working down the coal mine. Now, just imagine that. In 1902, he's playing for England when we're winning the home championships at the Crystal Palace. 
uh, he saying he lifted the FA Cup in 1902, it's not strictly true. Uh, in the first game, he went to replay against Southampton. Bennett was injured. It was a player called Bill Barnes that we mentioned before, who stepped into the breach, played in the replay, and scored one of the definitive goals in there. But he got a winner's medal, we do know that. Sheffield United got dispensation because he played in every round and the first final, that he got a minted medal, which was very rare in those days. Uh, but some player, and quite famously, 1908, He's on his way back from the coal face uh, to go up the pit shaft in the cage to have breakfast. And as he's trying to get out of the mine, there's a 10 ton rock fall and fell on top of him, broke his neck, crushed him. So just imagine that, you know, you watch an England game. Six years before that, he's at Crystal Palace, which is the Victorian Wembley. He's lifting the home championships for his country. He's lifting the FA Cup for Sheffield United. He's got a league championship medal. He's played for the Football League. He's done everything. And six years later, he's dead at the bottom of a mine shaft. Incredible, isn't it, when you think about it? Wouldn't happen today. But Thicket, yeah, Thicket was a big game changer down at Bristol City. And I suppose, in the same way, Bennett played his part in a big part of Bristol history as well. Uh, with the Thicket family, I've seen this wonderful spowed dish or whatever. It's not spowed, maybe willow pattern or something like that. Which tells you about all the, uh, the success of that season, all the different games on it. And that's with the Thicket family. He remarried. Um, and quite interestingly, his first two children to his wife who passed away stayed in Doncaster, yet he remarried and had two children, I think, down there. But all over Bristol, Gloucestershire, Wales, Doncaster, they stick it, stick it's galore. And they're all pretty much related to Harry. Uh, but he didn't have a long life, unfortunately, as we say, died in the early 1920s. So there's a couple of great connections with the Sheffield United of the past and Bristol City's illustrious past their cup final and their second division championship and also a few memories of uh, the great Ted Bergen, Sheffield United in England and a loyal club servant in the shape of Kevin Randall. We hope the near capacity crowd tomorrow is going to be buzzing here at Bramble Lane. Get yourselves down early, there's loads going off, these are all finals. Uh, we need to get behind the team and enjoy a fantastic game in what should be superb conditions.